So with that, uh, let me just do the first agenda item, which is our standard item. I also do this mostly for fun because it's uh, fun for me to see how well um, ChatGPT answers this. And um, I, I don't know. At first, I was getting disappointed when it was answering well. But, you know, if that means it, um, it's becoming a better learning tool, then I have no, in, I, I have, in principle, I have no issue with that, as long as you're using it as a learning tool. And, and you know, <laughs> that's uh, one of the reasons I feel kind of comfortable that I had uh, started requiring the one-on-one -on -one in person meeting. Because uh, uh, that's a kind of the flexible setting where I don't have to wonder if uh, any of the work is coming from an outside source. And it's, um, and it's flexible, you know, I think it accommodates people at many different stages of knowledge as far as uh, how well you are absorbing the material in this class goes. So let me start out with this first question. Um, yeah, I'll just put in both, make sure I label parts A and B. Um, I imagine it'll answer well. These are kind of typical scenarios um, that you know that, that's in your textbook. So I think uh, it's got enough uh, training text that, that kind of covers these scenarios. So will is will is on top of the incline. It's most likely to slip uh, if the incline is steep. Uh, let's see, steep. Yeah, compared to gently sloped. This is because uh, oh, oh I see. Um, <laughs> it's stating in such a weird way. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, so um, yeah, yeah. And in the the model answer, you will see a, a better way of phrasing this. But yeah, th this is uh, correct enough in that. Um, so you know, static friction is always going to be what it needs to be to maintain the static condition, meaning uh, no slipping of the wheel surface and the um, and the incline and. Um, when when it's uh, at a steeper angle, you got two things that go against uh, that happening. One, the amount of friction force has to be greater in order for um, in order for the the angular acceleration to match acceleration. That's one. And two, this si second effect, um, you know, it's kind of wrapped up in this uh, one sentence. Maybe <laughs> is uh, as your angle gets steeper, the normal force decreases. So even if you needed the same amount of friction force, your coefficient would need to be greater to still provide the same friction force. So that's good, other than the weird phrasing of this sentence. Um, B, uh, which rolls down faster, hollow cylinder or so solid sphere? Uh, you have to look at the rotational inertia and compare that. Both are the same due to that. Now, by the way, it doesn't matter if they have the same mass or radius, uh, because um, in the derivation for those expressions, mass cancels out, as you might expect all gravity-related uh, phenomena, and actually even radius cancels out, because uh, it cancels out if you do the derivation. So that actually doesn't matter uh, due to the difference in the distribution mass. Yeah, moment of inertia, that's the key thing, uh, we, which we call, I prefer to call it rotational inertia. Moment of inertia is a still common term, and um, you know, you should know that moment of inertia means rotational inertia. Okay, yeah, and uh, you can look this up in the textbook. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's good. Uh, good answer. Um, let uh, let let me paste this in in a way that might confuse uh, the chatbot. Uh, so you know, the, copying and pasting this actually produces this extra text. Let me just leave them in and see what it does. I suspect it won't get distracted by links to an external site because that's the kind of text it's already in its training text. So I don't think it would be confused by that. Yeah. So what is the purpose? Uh, it, it's to, um, I guess, uh, counter the, the reaction torque from the main rotor. Uh, crucial role, flight dynamic, yeah, counteract the torque, the reaction torque generated by the main rotor. So in order to turn the rotor, the rotor exerts a torque back on the helicopter. Um, yeah, it, um, I wish, uh, okay, it does uh, bring up Newton's third law of motion, that's good, and that's in, that prompt is not in the question, so I think that's good. Uh, sideways thrust, yeah, the counters. Um, and... Uh, I wonder, hmm, 
So I guess we don't have that question here, but uh, this is one of the, I think, multiple choice questions. So let me ask this as a follow-up question. Um, so let's see, in uh, so tell power to buy main plant, um, main model store contributes direction of motion, associate same, yeah, okay. Common solution, there are alternative designs, Includes the, the talk to the fan that I don't think I know, and no turn no tell order system. Which is, um, um, can you describe no tar system in some detail? Uh, I wonder if it's gonna describe like helicopters with the two main rollers. Uh, if uh, it doesn't describe it, then I'll ask about the two. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, that's not what it's describing. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, when it's done, I'll ask the question. Uh, uh, I've seen helicopters and uh, with the two main rotors, and in fact, also quadcopters uh, with no uh, tail rotor. Uh, how do these work? Is, uh, I think these systems actually have a much simpler solution to that reaction torque, uh, yeah, which is that, uh, yeah, different cousins in the two main rotors, they are arranged in tandem so that um, as so, uh, as they both spin together, they cancel out the, you know, torque. <laughs> and the quadcopters can actually be more interesting. You might have seen with the drones how the they can actually kind of change their position uh, with the four rotors, I think they have more uh, way to kind of use that counter torque to um, position them. Yes, yeah, two spin clock too. And, and then there are other, yeah. I, why does it keep bringing this up? I, what? <laughs> yeah, sometimes a uh, chatbot has this thing where it gets a stuck on some particular element of whatever's in its training text and it keeps trying to push it. Maybe maybe it's a subliminal advertisement. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, let me just ask this question. Um, oh, so this is not quite as common because this is a question that I've written for physics 10. Um, let me ask it anyway. I might have to clean up the copy and paste the job. Let's see. Um, Pre-session, uh, let me get rid of this because it's unnecessarily confusing. Uh, uniquely illustrate pictures following video. I'm just gonna leave this link on. Um, yeah, please answer the following conceptual question, the motion you see in the video above. Process and make a prediction. Okay, one more search. All right, I think that's good. Let me ask. And, you know, again, it can't uh, actually watch the videos, but some of its uh, training texts might have something that re refers to video. So, most relevant sources. Uh, well, our textbook, certainly. Um, this, maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, although I don't think any of these are uh, these direct videos. But... That might be enough. Uh, Precession is inversely proportional to the rate. Of, okay, yeah, that's the correct answer. <laughs> uh, can you explain it? Uh, it'll precess slower. Yeah, it's counterintuitive. A lot of people just the guessing wouldn't guess that, but that is the correct answer. Now, uh, does it actually explain it? Type of function, apply the spinning wheel. It doesn't turn perpendicular precession. <sighs> Yeah, so the wheel's angular momentum is an important part, but I don't think it ever actually goes into um, what would be intuitive uh, in, in explanation. Um, yeah, this is just another way to say the same thing that he was already saying. And it's giving the formula and, you know, like if you cite me a formula, I will not be impressed. <laughs> I will be impressed if you can explain to me where different elements of this formula come from. Yeah. So, you know, what I will tell you is that, um, uh, watch this video. So the Veritasium guy, I have a mixed feelings about the guy, Derek, I think is his name. Uh, but this is one, it, this is a good video. Um, the main, my main hangups about that channel is that sometimes he does the clickbaity stuff because, you know, 
he's an entertainer or whatever. But I've reviewed this video and I feel satisfied. I feel satisfied with. Oh, wait, why is this so short? Um, shorter than I remember it being, but it, it's a it's a good explanation. Why is it in Chinese? <laughs> Uh, I might have switched this. To, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, anyways, um, so he, his explanation includes some diagrams that is helpful in thinking through um, how how external torque affects motion of an object that already has an angular momentum. So, yeah. So all the answers are good. Sometimes you know it gets wordy, and I, I don't think, uh, I don't know, if somehow this explanation helps you, I guess, you know, whatever helps you, but I think here it's uh, it, it was doing one of those things where when it doesn't know the correct good answer, it kind of produces a long answer instead, because it's uh, kind of trying to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. So, okay, so that's this conceptual question.